theta of A relative to the identification of M and N, P is morally equal to Q, uh, or yeah, can be identified with Q along alpha. So the point is it's modulo the fact that M and N are equal, or identified by alpha, P is equal to Q modulo that fact. Okay. So that, that, that kind of thing comes up a lot. Okay, so we're going to need those two things, but first now let me talk about that I goof up? Uh, this should have said Q, right? Oh, God. All right, this should have said P. I'm, so, I'm terribly sorry. Okay. Yeah, that should have said P and Q. You transport P along alpha, which goes from here to here. Once you've transported, they become comparable. They're sort of vertical. So if I look in general for, say, here I took Q to be the transport. But if I didn't do that, and what I'm saying is P can be moved over to here, and then there's a path from it to Q. And that's the that's the uh, that's what I'm saying. This expresses an inhabitant of this. If beta were in this type, then beta would be this identification right here. Okay? It says take P over to where it makes sense to compare them, and now P B is the witness to their comparability or to their identification. Okay, so this is sometimes called the vertical morphism. It's, it's taking place vertically above N. And the <laughs> in a certain sense, this could also be called heterogeneous equality. Although that phrase has been used for something related, but not the same. <clears throat> so you could call it that. So it's a kind of, it, it comes up a lot when you're dealing with families of types, okay? And I'll, I'll use that fairly uh, frequently. Okay, so we're okay with that. That's just the definition. I just need a notation. It'll make certain things clearer. Okay, okay. okay, now let's look at the elementary properties of equality or identification. So I will say, first of all, I will say identification this is a very weak thing to say, but I will say it. It's an equivalence relation. Okay. Well, one. We already know, I'll start by using a little blackboard shorthand for things. We already know it's reflexive by definition. So the question is, is it symmetric and transitive? Well, it's simultaneously uh, obvious and not obvious. <laughs> uh, it's obvious if you think of the identification type as being sort of the least reflexive relation, then uh, it's the diagonal. <laughs> and so it's symmetric uh, and transitive. So you can think of it like that. OK, if you want to think of a relation as a bunch of ordered pairs, then that's what that is. But here, let's look at how we prove this fact. So the thing that's interesting is, in something like first order logic, you must axiomatize that the thing written equal sign has the properties that it's symmetric, reflexive, symmetric, transitive, and you must axiomatize that uh, everything respects it. Here, it, it's for free. It's already there. Okay, I don't need to like put in axioms. Okay, governing equality. It's a property of equality when defined in this elegant manner. So what I'm going to claim is, I can write it like a rule, so I can say the rule is, if you have an identification of M and N, so I will say that this rule is derivable. Okay. If you give me an identification of M and N, then there's an identification which it begs to be written alpha inverse. We'll get to that. You could write that as sim of alpha, or a reversal of alpha, or whatever strikes your fancy, okay? Uh, there's some term that has a suggestive name uh, that says that m equals n equals m. So the, my point here is that uh, equality ought to turn out to be an equivalence relation if it's worthy of being called equality. So the question is, how do I prove this? Okay, so that's what I want to do, okay? 
All right. So the way I'm going to prove this is I'm going to do an identification induction, and I'll do it here. I, I, I only need the uh, I only need the simplified form. Okay, the J prime. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I will do an identification induction, and I'll, I'll use the simplified form. I'll do a proof in, by identification induction on alpha. That's like sort of magic uh, in a way. Uh, and in fact, uh, one of the achievements, uh, well, I'll come back to that later. Okay, so identification induction on alpha. So what does that mean? It means that the proof objects in question, alpha inverse, is going to be defined as, I'll use J prime, okay? And I have to have a motive for the induction. Well, just guess. <laughs> what should the motive be? Okay. Well, J prime is the sort of thing that when given information, I have to fill in here, will produce a proof, so alpha is a proof of n equals n. So J prime is going to give me something with n, m and n for x and y in whatever motive I choose. So I have to fill that in here. So if I want it to prove n equals m, what should I choose for my motive? Never mind what happens here, just say the skeleton of the argument is a use of J prime will emit a, a term whose type is m for n, x, y, and whatever it is you choose, which is the thing we're going to put right here. So regardless of how I achieve that, let's not worry about it. Uh, and why is it m for n? Because it's being applied to alpha, which equates or identifies m and n. So m and n are what go in for x and y, because that's what j prime side in the upper left. So, what, so based on that alone, what should be the motive? Someone? Y equals x. Uh, probably someone said it. Y equals x. Yeah, y equals x, clearly, right? If I, and, uh, and remember, that's a type. Uh, if you wanted to, I know sometimes it can be psychologically like, easier to not be reminded of the connection with equality and just write that. Okay? So that's a type. So if I plug in for x and y in y equals x, then what am I going to get? Well, so that's going to be n equals uh, m. So we're, 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 we're doing well, okay? So the question is, what do we fill in here? Well, the principle of identification induction says it's sufficient to show for any x and a that the motive is inhabited by x and x. That is, you can show me that x is equal to x and a, right? Because I want to show that c holds upper left for x and x. Well, what do I put there? Reflexivity, right? Of x. So what goes here is x dot Raphael of x. And we'll allow it, we're done. Okay? So that's the proof. So symmetry is already present in the language. Transitivity is a little tricky, trickier. Uh, when phrased in this way, I will say, okay. so I want something in M equals A P. So if that's true and that's true and that's true, but I want to say more than that. I want to actually calculate, if you give me evidence for it here, for this and evidence for that, I want to compute evidence for this, which I will write alpha dot beta. You could also write it as transitivity of alpha and beta, if that feels better to you, and any other notation that you might like, okay? But I'll call it alpha dot beta, sort of multiplication of a kind, of a sense, in a sense. In fact, it's the notation that Ed uses for, uh, for composition of maps in a category. And that's quite true because uh, I'll just throw something out there. The identification type is really the HOM object for the type theory, okay? So this is what is going to happen. So we'll, we'll see what happens later. Well, we'll see about that a little bit later. So it's the notational thing. So that one of our goals this week, which I feel very happy that I think we've largely achieved, is to 
cross-reference each other and reinforce one another from different points of view. So I'm kind of trying to draw those out. That was like a specific objective of mine this week. Okay, so we want to say that this, is, this rule is derivable. And this, this example is going to allow me to, uh, to illustrate something that is, um, well, you can have your opinion about it. <clears throat> it's, the downside of proof relevance is that the proofs are relevant. <laughs> okay, and that's basically what I want to say. Okay, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. Okay? So, how are we going to do this? Well, what we want to do is I want to define alpha dot beta, okay, to be an element of that type, and it's got alpha and beta to work with, okay? That's what it wants to do. So the way I'm going to do it is one, one way I can, I can do this, okay, is uh, to do, I think I can do it by a, I think I can do it by uh, uh, an identification induction on alpha, so we'll try that. So we're going to do J with some motive, which I haven't really written here yet. Okay, let, let me think about this for a moment. Because I, I know that I'm going to get into trouble here, so let me remind myself what I did. I have to strengthen the induction myself. Okay. I don't know if I should waste time showing you proof that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, here is the thing that I'm going to say, so I will get to this. To define that, I'm going to say, so what we're in is a situation, I can write it like this, that for yeah, x and m equals a n, and y equals n equals a p, I want to find x dot y, and write it like that, which is in m equals Okay, so this is what I what I need to do. So I'm going to I'm going to in order to make the proof work, I'm going to claim it suffices to show the following thing. If x is m equals a, uh, what do I do here? So I should really I have to remember now. I was concentrating on other things before I came in here. I have to remember now what I wrote. Yeah, so I, I actually broke that out. So maybe I should do this. So I can do this in a different way. It may not be necessary in the end, but let me follow what I did in my notes. I'll try it like this. There's the whole thing. Let's generalize it completely and just say we have x, y, z, and I. E is in it, I, x, y. There's a reason for this, but uh, you'll see what's in between that. Okay, y, z. So now it's in its fully general form. And then I can just plug in M, M, T, and alpha, and beta, and I'll be done. Okay, so what I want is something which could be called P dot Q, and it will be an it a of X, Z. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. So that's, that's what I need to do. Because I can plug in M, M, P, plug in alpha, beta, and then I will get the composition that I want, which is right here, alpha dot beta. Okay, so that's good. So it turns out the way to do it, I could do it's sort of fun, but I don't have time to go through all the ways. It's very easy to get stuck trying to prove it. So what I can do is I can say I will I will do it like this. Whoops. I'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. So I'll have x, y, and a, and uh, p and did a x, y. And then I will have a strengthened induction hypothesis. And I will prove, I'll just refactor it. For Z and A, every if Y is equal to Z, then X is equal to Z. So I should be able to get from here to here, right? Because if I if I manage to prove this, okay, then I'll take Z to be that Z, and I will take the apply that to Q, and then I will get something whose type is kid I execute. Okay, so I'm, I'm good. This is, in fact, sufficient. 
time to show that. Okay, and how are we going to do that? Well, I'll just look at it in terms of the proof term. But what I mean is there is just something in here. And uh, something I'm going to put in there is lambda z. That's an element of pi type. Lambda, I don't know, mu, which is, uh, you know, uh, it did yz or y equals z. Okay, good. And then what I'm going to do is one way to do this is I can do another j prime on this as the motive. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another j prime. Okay? And I'm going to put in something here. And I'm going to do it on p. Okay? And when I do it on p, what I'm going to do is plug in x and y into the motive. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it be, the motive is going to be x, y, did y, z, arrow, did x, z. And now if I do this path induction, or identification induction on p, then I will plug in x and y into the motive. So the type of this will be did y, z, arrow, did x, z. That's what we'll go here. So it'll be this will go in here, and then I lambda abstract on z. And so this whole thing will be in the pi. And then as I previously indicated, if I have an element of that pi, then I can get the thing I wanted, and if I can get that, I can show that that's derivable. So that's how we're doing it. Okay, so now what I need to do is, uh, given uh, u, or I already have u, uh, given v, okay, what does V have to be? V has to be in A, right? So I have a V in A. And then I want to show that the, I want to give a proof here. And it has to be that, it's a proof that it, uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, I want to say, it D, Z, arrow, it D, Z, yes. Right? that I need something that instantiates the motive with V and V. So it's id VZ, arrow id VZ, which I've written here, which is, of course, can be witnessed by lambda whatever, whatever, okay? The identity function. And I'm done, okay? That's the thing that I can do. Yes. Can you not write the lambda on U? Do I what? You're getting a function out. Oh yeah, I'm getting a function out. Yeah, you're right. So something had bugged me about that. So you're right. I, you're right. Exactly. I can just take lambda z. This is my motive, and now uh, yeah, that's somehow probably why I wanted to write it u. Doesn't make any difference, of course, but I'll bet you in my notes it's u. <laughs> okay, and uh, and that's the that's the proof. Yeah, you're right. Thanks. It's both good for me to develop it at the board and bad because I get confused easily. It's hard to do stuff when you're standing in front of class. Okay, so we uh, so that's one proof. So the point is that this is proof number one, and it has the property. Okay, this proof has the property that well, what property should it have? It's a identification induction on P. So if you look at what I get out of J prime, it was written in terms of J prime, the, the limited version, just to make it clearer. Well, the only property I will get now is that if you plug in REFL for P and concatenate that with Q, you will get Q at the appropriate time. That will hold here, and I, I neglected to mention earlier that a consequence of this particular proof is that REFL of M inverse will be computationally the same as REFL of M. And that's a consequence of the fact that J prime, when you plug in uh, REFL, will give me, plug in M, REFL of M, will plug in M for X and you'll get REFL of M back. Okay, so that's what that will do. So this is the computational equation I get for inverse. It's sort of all you could ask for, okay? But this is not all you could ask for because, and this is why I wanted to make a point about the downside of proof relevance, is you get that. 
But what you don't get is p dot refl of n, let's call it, okay? You don't get that that's calculationally the same as p. And the reason is that this, this plays the role of q, and q was never touched in this proof, right? I never bothered about, I never bothered about q. I mean, if you look at it, it, en it ends up uh, being the thing that I, I apply this function to q in order to get back to where p dot q to get back to here. And q was never examined. I never looked at the code of q. And because I never looked at the code of q, then I will never be able to have this as a calculational fact. You'll be able to prove, in a sense that I'll expand on shortly, that it, this is identified with that. There exists an identification of the left side and the right side, but they don't compute. And when you start doing mechanizations, particularly if it's your first time, this kind of thing that this holds and that doesn't hold, you remember I gave you an example of this a few days ago about plus of you know, m and zero was m, but plus of, computationally, calculationally, but plus of uh, zero and m is, well, now we'll be able to say it is only identified with m. It's not, it doesn't calculate to them. So in this case, I have a way around that, okay, because I can write a different proof. And the different proof, which I'm not going to write out in full here, I'll leave it as an exercise, but I'll tell you what it is, is gratuitously examine, okay, this proof u, okay, that, that uh, the proof that you, uh, the proof that, or z, uh, the proof that is like your z, all right, in order to do another j prime on z, for not really any good reason. You don't need to, you just do it. And if you do that, then you will discover that both of these equations hold in sense two.